Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just kicked off our new series, Business Not As Usual, a study on the book of Esther. Welcome, Pastor Ken. Thanks. All right, so this was a great start. I love how we're transitioning to looking at the book of Esther. Mm -hmm. um, and But today, we looked at several characters who are integral to her story right. as we're leading up to her. Yeah. Um, we did have some questions come in um, really about the content, but also um, some historical questions as sure. well. So I'm gonna start with those. Um, the first one, um, this person wrote in and said, um, they've seen some conflicting reports on the historical events in the book of Esther. How can we be confident that uh, historically this book is accurate? Right, well, and the same could be said of any number of books mm -hmm. in the Old Testament. Um, there's, there's always, you know, uh, been naysaying literature coming along and saying that didn't happen. But then for every one of those, then you look and you say, but there are other sources that have said, yes, it did. And even archeology span that comes along, sometimes not as quickly as we would have, but then sooner or later, something's dug up and they're like, oh, looky there. That bears out the truth of what's in God's word. And so, um, so I'm going to fall in the camp of yes, uh, it uh, it is true, and we can rely on it. Uh, one of the extra -bib biblical uh, uh, sources that we could draw on mm -hmm. is the writings of Josephus. Okay, is that the book that you referenced, referenced today? Okay, that's right, and which is a uh, a popular, well-worn source. Who he was not uh, a believer, but uh, just a secular historian, but uh, his works line up uh, very confirmingly. Mm -hmm. And if you want something just a little simpler, um, one of the sources that I'm enjoying reading and I've always enjoyed uh, is uh, from the biography series that Chuck Swindoll did some years ago on a number of the characters, and this one's on Esther. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that's a that's a a, a simple read as well that uh, reaches outside for some um, historicity as well. Okay, uh, tell us more. Uh, the question came around around King Xerxes. Mm. It, was he a Jew mm -mm. or was Queen Vashti a Jew? Mm -mm. No. Did they believe any? No, they were Persians. They, okay. yeah, no, we don't have any any indication uh, of. No, it's it's. Uh, well, I don't want to give the story away. Okay, so stay tuned. Next, stay you'll tuned. Have to, you'll with, have to be and here. You'll see how the Jewish story comes into all of this. Okay. Um, but you'll see quite clearly uh, by the time we get into uh, chapter two or three or four, uh, he wasn't. Mm -hmm. But he's going to be informed. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can't wait to hear it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's transition from really the historical context that you gave us today to mm -hmm. the application of how we can apply yeah. what we see happen mm -hmm. um, here. And we talked about pride mm -hmm. and lust and the counsel of many. many. Mm -hmm. um, and the question came around, um, what is going on in the soul of a believer who is really struggling with pride or lust um, but refuses counsel? Mm. Is there anything that well, we can do besides pray? <laughs> well, I don't know that they are struggling mm -hmm. with it. If um, it, it, I mean, what we want is to be struggling with it. Right. It's the person who has in his own mind or her own mind risen above it mm -hmm. and doesn't even think of it, mm -hmm. doesn't even see it anymore. Um, and that's the person who needs to hear us lovingly say, your Xerxes is showing, you know, and, and, but what do you do when a person just can't seem to hear that? Well, uh, you, uh, besides praying, well, certainly let's not discount praying. I think you have to be doing that and, um, 
maybe gathering some other people to join you in prayer about that person and for that person, that there would be a softening um, on the, uh, if that's on the vertical level with God on the horizontal level, um, there's conversations that we talked about speaking truth and love. Um, you know, uh, Matthew 18 might indicate here's one way to go at it, go directly and then go with another person and then go with yet another person, a leader of the church that says, hey, there is a problem here and you need to see this. Um, uh, the secular term for that, and maybe if you thicken the group up just by a few more people, is called an intervention mm. where you sort of uh, circle the person and say, here is the truth and we're not letting you out of the circle till you hear us say, here's the situation. Mm. Um, and some people respond to that type of intervention and some people even seeing all their loved ones and closest friends and, and most confidant, confidants will still shrug it off. And that's a sad thing. I think at that point, there is not much we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, pride comes before the fall and a haughty spirit comes before destruction. And so either you can humble yourself or God will humiliate you. Mm. Uh, and so you have to choose it, which way, you know, and, and so my hope for this person or the person that this person's thinking about is that they, that one of these would sort of just move one of the tectonic plates just enough that there would be a shift and something would start to give way and that, that maybe they would uh, be a softening. You know, I think what you said um, is really important to remember is that in order to have those conversations, there has to be a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like if it's your friend mm -hmm. or a coworker or someone, um, you can't just enter into a, hey, I think, you're, I think you have pride yeah. unless you've really built a relationship, yeah, right. you know? And I think about sometimes right. if people are difficult to deal, to deal with, you want to pull maybe you want to pull away from that relationship or try to avoid them, but really in order to be able to speak into someone's life, mm. no matter yeah. how hard it is, yeah. you got to continue loving that person and sure. uh, being in relationship with them. Yeah, that's good. Um, you know, someone wrote in about the story of the professor that you shared today, which is a very impactful story. My professor, yeah, our, yes. Dan's and my yes, professor. Yes, your professor yeah. that you- uh, Broke our uh, hearts. Yeah, broke your hearts. Mm -hmm. And it said, if, if even him, mm -hmm. he, which is, uh, was such a man of God, mm -hmm. um, with such wisdom, uh, could fall or stumble in that way, um, what would it take, what needs to happen to break a man of his pridefulness if they're blind to their own pride and they, they won't listen to counsel? Mm -hmm. uh, well, again, <laughs> and, and where it really gets tricky, is when you have somebody who is a believer and a leader of believers, mm -hmm. um, a, 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 a pastor, or in this instance, a, a former pastor, but then teacher, professor, book writer, speaker on the circuit, you know, sort of thing. Um, because what happens, as best I can understand, is that person has gotten so good at knowing the truth, but mm -hmm. not feeling the truth, not living it out in their hearts, but they can rattle it off. And the thing Dan and I had to work through is, okay, what we learned is still true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because the instinct was we wanted to just tear up our notebooks from 15 years prior and say, forget all that. But it was good. It mm -hmm. was true. And it was coming, you know, it, 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 obviously he just, he, it was just coming from up here and God still used it. Um, but it was no longer working on him down here. And, and that's the problem. And, and so I think it's particularly important for those of us who are Christians, who are leaders of other Christians, to make sure that we are uh, surrounding ourselves with mm. authentic community um, who 
can speak truth to us and whom we will adjust our course upon hearing what they say, not discounting. I think he would say, um, if he were still here, um, I, I had outgrown all my, outgrown all my community and, and I just didn't have anybody who was, uh, keeping tabs on my life, at least not to me. I think and if you find yourself in isolation, isolation, yeah, the devil, things just uh, really yeah, grow. Yeah. I, I heard the quote, uh, one time, if the devil can get you singled out, he will get you picked off. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the problem. So here he was teaching hundreds of students and speaking at conferences to thousands of people and signing autographs and so forth. But he was alone mm -hmm. and, uh, doing that life, you know, on airplanes and, and going off and, 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 and so he still knew all the right things. It just wasn't bubbling up and percolating in his soul anymore. Um, there's sad. so many reasons that community is so important. So important. So important. Um, and um, so today we kind of got some historical yeah. context. Mm -hmm. Next week we'll be yeah we'll start getting into the to the good part of the story moving next more week. More into the yeah okay. We'll see God's hand uh, of providence just really start to guide um, in these s several critical turning points in the story that. Uh, it's just marvelous to watch what happens. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.